Monte Carlo Panic Porn. How Wall Street Scares You Into Bonds. Why Monte Carlo Simulations Are Fairy Tales That Scare You Into a Miserable Retirement and a Smarter Fix. Have you ever been terrified by those retirement calculators showing a scary chance of running out of money? That's Monte Carlo Simulations at work, spinning wild what-if scenarios that often paint a doom and gloom picture far worse than reality. In this video, we'll debunk why most of those simulated failures could never happen in real life, how they push you towards boring bond-heavy portfolios that slash your retirement lifestyle by an average 15 to 35% in annual spending, and why planning flexible actions during market dips is a game changer for staying wealthy without the fear mongering. Ignore Monte Carlo panic porn for empowered planning. Focus on adaptability over probabilities. Retirement isn't about avoiding every storm. It's about sailing through them smarter. So in this video, you'll learn what are Monte Carlo simulations, why most simulated failures are myths that can't happen in real life, why the stock market is not a random walk, how the solution of more bonds can make your retirement miserable, why action plans for market downturns are a better solution, why failures are not ca catastrophic, just temporary lifestyle adjustments, and retirement isn't about avoiding every storm, it's about sailing through them smarter. So what are Monte Carlo simulations? Monte Carlo simulations are thousands of random market scenarios based on statistics related to historical data to predict market success rates. They may be based on statistics for the average return and deviation of the stock market, or they may be snapshots of actual history randomly clipped together in thousands of random ways. They create a bell curve out of the thousands of results that looks like a hill that's low at the left and right sides. The peak of the hill is the most likely scenario. The left tail is your failures and the right tail is your great successes. So Monte Carlo simulations can tell you a theoretical chance that you will run out of money during your retirement. They're using, they're using financial planning mainly for the theoretical risk of the worst case scenario. If your plan has only an 80% chance of success, that's too low, right? That's one in five chance of running out of money. Time to panic. So these tools overestimate risks because they don't simulate the stock market. They treat markets as purely random chaos. They also ignore real world adjustments you can make to your adjustments to your lifestyle or your investments, such as delaying vacation. Okay, why most simulated failures are myths that can't happen in real life. In reality, most of the left tail failures and right tail successes are fairy tales. They could not happen in real life. For example, in the tech bubble from 1995 to 99, the stock market more than tripled in five years. Monte Carlo simulations will include five tech bubbles in a row so that your investments are 250 times as much. Your 100,000 becomes 25 million. In the global financial crisis of 2008, the market was down 40%. Monte Carlo simulations would include five of these in a row to put, your mark, your, put the market down more than 90%. Your 100,000 becomes less than 10,000 in five years. So now why can't we have five bubbles or five crashes in a row? The market valuation would get ridiculously high or low. At some point, smarter investors will sell when a market is way too expensive or buy in when it's way too cheap. The market is not a random walk. Nobody walks randomly down Wall Street. So now why the stock market is not a random walk? The random walk theory states that stock market results are purely random. They are like a coin flip and, and unaffected by any other results before or after. It's like a drunk stumbling down the street. For example, if you have a coin that just flipped heads 10 times in a row, the next flip is still 50-50 chance of either heads or tails. If the stock market was like that, then you could have five bubbles or five crashes in a row because it says the market is not affected by the recent past. <clears throat> However, the stock market is not like that. With the stock market, big crashes are usually followed immediately by explosive rebounds. The largest losses and largest gains are usually right after each other. Here are the biggest gains and losses for a day, week, month, year, and, and decade. So in, in the chart there, we, you see it's, it's every historic crash was followed by one of the biggest gains ever. 
So the worst day since 1930s was March 16th, 2020, during COVID, a loss of 12%. And the second best day since the 1930s was March 24th, just a week later, a gain of 9.4% in one day. So now the worst week on record in history was March 16th, 20 of 2020, down 18% in a week. The best week since the 1930s was the very next week, March 23rd to 27th, a gain of 11.9%. Now, the worst month on record was October 1929, the big crash, down 26.5%. But the third best month on record was November 1929, the very next month, a gain of 10.2%. The worst year on record was 1931, down 47%. But the best year on record was 1933, just two years later, up 54%. Though the worst decade on record is 2000 to 2009. It's actually worse than the 1930s. It was a loss a decline of 3.4% per year for a decade. But the best decade on record was the very decade just before that, in the 1990s, 1990 to 99, which is a gain of 18.2% a year. So you see, in every case, the, the, the worst case was followed or it was immediately right before, right or right after, was the best or one of the best cases. So this means that the stock market is significantly more re reliable than the random walk theory claims. In his historic book, Stocks for the Long Run, Professor Jeremy Siegel proved that the random walk theory is not accurate for the stock market. He showed the actual standard deviation, which is a statistic for in unpredictability of stocks, bonds, and cash, in real life and compare them to the random walk theory. In this chart from his book, the dashed lines are the random walk. Note that the actual stock market risk, the unpredictability, declines much faster than random walk claims, claims the longer you are invested. The actual standard deviation after 30 years is barely over half the random walk. In contrast, the risk of bonds and cash declines much more slowly than, random, than the random walk the longer you are invested. For cash, the 30-year risk is more than double what the random walk predicts. Now, the reasons for this is that big gains in the stock market tend to be right after big losses. After big loss, you almost always re recover a large portion, a portion of it almost immediately. However, bad periods of bonds and cash tend to be followed by more bad periods because they usually result from high inflation, which tends to stick around for a while when, once it appears. Bonds lost half their value after inflation after 40 years during the bond collapse from 1940 to 1980. And then they had 40, that was 40 bad years. And then they had their best time ever during the bond bubble from 1980 to 2020. So they tend to have very long periods. Now, how the solution of more bonds can make your retirement miserable. The problem with Monte Carlo simulations is that the recommended solution is usually more bonds or a you know, more conservative portfolio, which can mean a dramatically lower retirement lifestyle for you. The financial software often comes with a dial to turn up the amount of bonds to see how much your failure rate declines. But remember, most of the failures are fairy tales. The result is that you end up with 20 to 50% more in bonds to reduce the chance of failures that are mostly fake. The cost to your lifestyle can be huge. Having 20% more in bonds typically reduces the income from your investments for a 30-year retirement by about 15%. Having 50% more in bonds typically reduces it by 35%. So, for example, investing $3,000 a month for 30 years in 100% equities, at stock market investments, can give you a retirement from age 65 to 100, age 100, at, of $100,000 per year, inflation-adjusted, just from your investments, if you keep the same allocation through retirement. However, if you switch when you retire at age 65 to 20% bonds and 80% equi equities, your investments will only give you $85,000 per year. With 50% bonds and 50% equities starting in retirement, that's $65,000 per year. So that means $15,000 per year or $35,000 per year less to spend for your entire retirement. There goes those extra trips that you wanted to take every year. That means fifteen to 30000 per year less for travel, hobbies, or gifting, turning a vibrant retirement into a frugal one, all to chase the illusion of safety. Is there a smarter way to deal with failures, especially since most are fake? Why action plans for market downturns are a better solution? 
Having an action plan for what you will do after ex extra large market declines is a more effective solution. For example, small tweaks such as delaying a vacation can fix 90% of these failures. We call it lifeboat drills. When the market is doing fine, decide what you will do when it declines. When it happens, knowing ahead of time what you will do can reduce or avoid you panicking. For a comfortable retirement, you can keep investments similar to the allocation you had while growing your nest egg. During the retirement, monitor your withdrawals. If your investments are down a lot and you're only withdrawing 4% a year or so from your investments, you probably don't need to do anything. Just keep enjoying your retirement. If your lower investments get your withdrawal rate too high, then reduce your spending for a year or a few years until it's back in line. Market declines rarely last long. In the last 150 years, 88% of, of stock market declines fully recovered in one or two years. The most likely scenario is that you will have to make few or no adjustments during your retirement. My 4% rule study showed that withdrawing 4% of your investments and increasing by inflation provided a 30-year retirement 97% of the time with an allocation of between 70 and 100% equities with no adjustments. So my study also showed that you could safely withdraw 5% a year or 6% a year with 100% success if you're able to adjust your lifestyle enough in down periods. So being a bit flexible in your lifestyle from year to year usually means that your average retirement income is probably still about the same. Skip a vacation for a year or two and then take extra ones in future years. This is unlike being panicked into having more bonds, which means your income is significantly lower for your entire retirement. Monte Carlo simulations assume you will not adjust either your lifestyle or your portfolio. However, action beats inaction. An action plan beats accepting a lower lifestyle for life. Focus on adapting, not probabilities. Why failures are not catastrophic, just temporary lifestyle adjustments? In Monte Carlo simulations, a 60% failure or 60% success rate sounds like a disastrous 40% chance of running out of money. However, it really means a 40% chance of minor adjustments, not bankruptcy. And given that most of the failures are fairy tales, probably only a 20% chance of minor adjustments in your lifestyle. Retirement isn't about avoiding every storm. It's about sailing through them smarter. Ignore Monte Carlo panic porn for empowered planning. Focus on adaptability over probabilities. Retirement isn't about avoiding every storm. It's about sailing through them smarter. All right, thank you for listening. What you learned is what are Monte Carlo simulations, why most simulated failures are myths that can't happen in real life, why the stock market is not a random walk, how the solution of more bonds can make your retirement miserable, why action plans for market downturns are a better solution, why failures are not catastrophic, just temporary lifestyle adjustments, and retirement isn't about avoiding every storm, it's about sailing through them smarter. Thanks for listening. My name is Ed Rempel. My blog is Unconventional Wisdom. It's the number one blog in Canada for a full-service financial planner. It's just, just my name, edrempel.com, or it's unconventionalwisdom.ca. If you use unconventional wisdom, it's .ca. If you'd like to potentially talk to us about possibly being uh, working with us, we offer a free 30-minute th consultation. Just go to edrempel.com backslash talk. If you subscribe to my blog, podcast, and YouTube, all that means is you get my latest weekly post by email once a week. We don't market it in any other way. My podcast is edrempel.com slash listen. YouTube is edrempel.com backslash watch. Thanks for watching, and we'll talk to you next week.